Hey guys, welcome to the channel. We are putting on dual shock steering stabilizer from Rough Country. Instructions, brackets, got all your hardware that we're gonna need. So, looks like a lot of hardware. More brackets, we got our shocks right here. This looks like it's gonna be a fun project. Hopefully a simple one. A lot simpler than the control worms we just done, that's for sure. All right, let's get it. All right, we're going to start out by taking our shock loose from the passenger side. Uh, the back nut is going to be an 18 millimeter, and the front one is going to be a 15 millimeter. Yep, 15 millimeter. And I've already loosened it. And the reason why I've done that is because I couldn't get it loose with the camera in the way. So I had to loosen it and then put the camera back where you guys could see. My Milwaukee Fuel Impact inch. I don't think it was strong enough to pull this because I'm really having to put some juice to it here to get it to loosen up. All right. Get this here pulled out. We'll pull it. And then I'm gonna put this bolt back in it, keep all this together. We're not gonna be reusing these bolts or nuts. To my knowledge, anyway. All right. All right, next, we're gonna break these four bolts right here loose. They also take a 15 millimeter, but you're gonna need a deep well. A deep, deep socket. You'll need a deep socket for this, cause a short one, it's not going fit over these studs right here. Let off the trigger, dummy. Ouch, that's hot. Get up here on it. You know what? Let's see if I can make this job a little bit easier right here. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this bottom one. Maybe I can spin this around enough to get the gun on it. Far it sucker stuck on there, isn't it? Huh. Well, I guess I'll beat it off. Alright guys. So we're gonna start out on the driver's side with this bracket. That bracket's gonna fit it just like so. Now, the bolt nut you're gonna need is gonna be a half inch. And when I say half, uh, half inch, it's gonna be the shortest. I'm gonna try to make this simple as I can. It's gonna be the shortest, fattest bolt you have in the kit. So it'll be the shortest one and the fattest one. And that's gonna go right here. And you're gonna need the nut that fits it. They're like, uh, they're a lock nut also, but they're the kind that expands. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe y'all can. But if you notice, it's not completely round. And once you tighten it on there, it'll stretch. So, and you're gonna need two washers that'll fit it. This video may be a whole lot longer than I thought because there's more to this than you would think. You're gonna slide that bolt through there. You're gonna put one washer in your mouth so you can get the dab on the thing. Try to figure out an angle to put this on. You're gonna run nut here. I mean, washer inside there. 
I'm taking that. Try to get it started. So, should have it there started good enough. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it on loose leaf for now. All right, so this next bolt is gonna be the only 7 sixteenths bolt you have, which is going, which is the 7 sixteenths, which is gonna be the skinniest bolt in the whole kit. So, and then the one on the driver's side with the flag, this is a flag nut, with the flag nut, I'd imagine it's gonna get the lock washer. So, I'm going to attempt I think I'm trying to put this lock washer up here on the back side. I don't know if y'all can see this or not. I'm gonna have to move the camera, I think. All right, I think y'all can see good from there, hopefully. All right, so I'm gonna put this up here. I'm barely just gonna set it in there just like that. And then we're gonna run, hopefully, See, try to get well I'm gonna push it all the way in try to get this lock washer here on or at least halfway in so I got the lock washer on the back side hold still then we're gonna take our flag nut and we're gonna slide it in just like this maybe I can, uh, you're gonna be a pain ain't you what a surprise. I don't think I can go in through it. I know I can go in through the hole. It's just holding it. There we are. You just slide it in like so. Start tightening this here down. All right. That is going to be a 5.8 socket right here. We'll tighten snug it down. Now, I'm not going to show tightening these down, like, you know, giving it the big, uh, we're just showing you how to put it together right now. All right. Now we move over on the passenger side. All right. Passenger side bracket. <clears throat> so, you're going to use your half inch bolt nut, which is the shortest bolt, you know, but the fattest one, it's a half inch. And we are going to secure this bracket over here. Now, your shock, your new shocks, some people may get confused, think your new shocks will go right here, it's not. This right here is officially gonna be the bracket to hold this bracket on. So, we will take this and put it here now this this bracket right here this part of the bracket is going to go on the inside up front supposed to anyway but that sh shit ain't lining up though is it let me try this there we are so put your bracket all the way up there then try to put the bolt in i was trying to do it that way and it just wasn't panning out. It was getting in a bind. And we'll use our nut. Screw it right there on. Okay. Then you'll take your 7 16 bolt again. It's the smallest bolt in the whole kit. Small like as in the diameter. And we will stick washer on each side of that. Right. 
I'm gonna get a bracket on here. That'll set somewhere like that. And I'm gonna use the same marks as my other one just at the moment. That way, until I figure out how I wanna line this. Get it lined up. And that. We may loose put all this together very loose like. So I can get some measurements or something. Cause we'll make sure it's the center. And I got my steering wheel as straight as I can possibly get it. I can't go by my steering wheel because we put the new track bar on and my steering wheel's off a little bit. So that's gonna create a problem for that if we use a steering wheel to line this up. So I lined it up by looking at the wheels. All right, now take your little, I got this little coat of grease on there to help this go in a lot better. But I'm gonna put this reducer sleeve in the rubber boot, slides right in that way. <laughs> Using your half inch hardware, which is the longest bolt you got in the whole kit, this one, we're gonna put, put the mail in closest to the wheel. Run that through right there. right there and you're going to put another washer in the nut right, I'm gonna leave that loose while we hook it to our bracket now do the other side just like this male in closest to the wheel female in closest to the center then we'll go to the middle bracket. All right, and this ain't gonna work. Cause look, I got it. I called Rough Country and talked to them about it. And they said on my year model, it's supposed to go on top, which is 08. But if you come here, that shock, it's not even gonna make it there. I mean, there's no clearance. And this is with three inch lift, their three inch lift on here. I called them back and they talked to a guy and he act like, I don't know if he knew what the hell he's talking about or not. But he uh, said he's gonna get me over to the guy I talked to the first time and all I got was a voicemail. So now check this here out. Now, if I'm supposed to put it on top, obviously we can't get the bolt in there, but if we set the shock here on top and run the bolt through, it's hitting there. Now, you're supposed to spin these collars if you don't have any clearance. Unbolt them and spin them, but that's not what the bolt's hitting. Can't see a problem here. So my only option is to bolt the shocks to the bottom, bolt everything to the bottom. So that's what we're gonna do. Mine is a 08, but it says here, on some later 2011-12 models, the steering stabilizer cylinders may need to be mounted on the bottom of the driver and passenger side end brackets to ensure clearance between the tie rod end and the cylinders. It shows here, there's a 2010, it's mounted on top. And here, on the 2012 model, it's mounted on the bottom. So we got to pretend like it's a 2012. I don't care what they say. And if it don't work, then I'll send, I'll send it back and we'll go with a different brand or figure something else out. So I'm gonna go over here and correct, correct this. It'll either be a correction or screwing it slap the heck up. I don't know. We'll get it together and see what happens. God, that sucker's on our tide, isn't it? So, I'm gonna take this right back off. Pull our bolt out. Come in on the bottom here. See how this right here lines. See if this lines up any better. Come on, fingers, work. Put her nut here. 
I don't know no other way of doing this, to be honest, to get clearance. Well, oh, that's, that's a lot more clearance than what I had. Cause that'll come down here. Yeah, see, I couldn't even bolt that on the bottom and set it up there on top or nothing. Just would not work. All right, let's put this together very loose like, and see what it looks like. All right, we got both shocks mounted on the brackets close to the wheel towards the, on the male sides. Got our female ends here. We'll run this bolt through here. Washer and a bolt through here. Now, obviously, this shock will not line up. See, it's hitting your U bolt. So, we're going to have to go underneath like this. All right. Then, I need to see if I can't get hold both these shocks up at the same time. Gonna be a could be a joke. Could be a joke. So I'm lining that up with my thumb. Alright. Put that there. So hold both these at the same time, hopefully. Like that. Ain't no way in heck I'm gonna be able to do that. So we're gonna see if we can do one at a time. It may be a little difficult. We'll find out. So I'll run, put this bracket here, like so. Enough just to barely get a nut started, so we'll have clearance to get our shock on the inside there. And that other one. Put a washer on. Then a nut. Alright. Shit. Yeah, be fine here. I have to pull this bolt up a little bit. Slide that on the inside. Line that bracket right there up. Put us a washer and a bolt. A bolt, washer and a nut. All right, gotta hold that in. Nut on. All right. That's the best way I see to do that for my truck in order to get the clearance. <clears throat> That's the only way it's going to work for my truck. Right. I don't know. Rough country never said to do it like this, but that's the way I see to do it. Hell, I'm gonna tighten it down and see what happens. If it ain't right, <laughs> we'll uh, do something different. All right, these are a 14 millimeter. Nope, 19 millimeter. Oh, why the hell I said 14. Tighten these up. That ain't gonna really be that tight, but I'm just gonna snug them down with this. Slide a wrench in there. Do this side. Get on there. Just make sure you tighten all your fasteners down. I've already tightened the fastener down on the bracket back here. Just uh, make sure this is level, straight up and down. And you really wanna tighten this bracket really good. And also, before I tighten that bracket down, I took a tape measure and I measured roughly five inches of the male end on each side, because my wheels are about as straight as I can get them. And that right there should get you closed and after. But you guys ain't gonna be getting alignment probably if you're just doing this right here. But I gotta get in alignment because, I mean, we've done the lift. We've done track, Carly track bar, APOC control arms, 
dual steering, uh, dual shock steering stabilizer. We're getting ready to put on a steering box brace from Rough Country. Sway bar links before we go get in line, drive the truck or anything. So uh, just make sure all this here is fastened up real nice and tight. I, like I said, they don't have a torque spec, so you're gonna have to make your own judgment on that. All right, guys, uh, Rough Country finally called me back. And the way we bolted this up is perfect. They said, uh, you know, sometimes different, you know, trucks have to set up differently.